I was pregnant, you could see this, and I asked her whether she would agree, and her husband, Arian, and I become the godfather of that baby. We did not know whether it was a boy or a girl, and she said yes. And I said, I'll become the godfather, whoever, whoever that will be. And this is little Yora sitting here beside her. And this is my personal uh, declaration of independence to Kosovo that I'm with the people of Kosovo, helping the people for a better future. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, for your patience. Thank you very much, Dr. Reinhardt. Uh, we have a 15-minute 15 15 period of questions uh, to which Dr. Reinhardt will be able to answer. So please... Uh... Don't be shy. <laughs> yes, uh, Dr. Reinhardt? Yeah. Um, you had mentioned, uh, of course, that this was a successful intervention that you were talking about some more recent ones that perhaps have been less so for NATO, specifically Afghanistan. What are the conditions that made it more positive here in terms of the outcome than what we're currently seeing in Afghanistan? I think there are two things which are totally different. This is and always was a part of a modern country. Yugoslavia was a modern country. They were already used to democratic, a democratic system, even so it was a communist democratic system, but it was a democratic system. The whole educational system is very close to the European educational system. I think every third Kosovo Albanian spent a couple of years in Germany, in Switzerland, in Sweden, in, in, in other countries. So the exchange of how we live in the rest of Europe and how they should live in Kosovo was very close. And I, rem I, I basically met so many young Kosovars who said, we want to live the same way you guys are living. Know, and, and, and it's not the question that we want to become fundamentalists as far as um, um, Islam is concerned. No, they want it to be the same way as we did. And I think having that level makes it much easier to tie in and to continue to build up on that level. If you are in Afghanistan, you have a, a population which at 92% uh, are uh, people cannot write or read. It's still, still steep and deep in, in, the, in the tribal system of the medieval times. A total different attitude. And I think our attempt to go there to bring them democracy, the way we see democracy in our countries, was totally stupid and will not succeed. Because they, these guys don't want to have our democracy the way it is. And we see this not only by our side, but by the people uh, in the villages. And therefore, our approach doesn't reach the hearts and minds of the local people. By here, we could talk to them, and we could show them and persuade them that we're here to help them. Therefore, the situation was much, much easier here than it will ever be in, in Albania and in Afghanistan. And I think we will not succeed in Afghanistan in this way. I'm afraid we will lose. I think uh, we have to cut down on NATO presence dramatically within the next year. And if it was after my decision, I would have done that before because I don't see, with the exception of some crazy Serbs in the northern part, I don't see any real threat to this country anymore. There is no threat that Serbia will come and try to invade this country anymore. Nevertheless, we'll stay here until your defense forces will be uh, capable of doing what the normal defense force does for every country. Uh, we are training them as NATO and I think that's a good job we're doing. Um, I think we have to support much more politically this country, uh, not only to the next election but after the next election to have democracy really uh, 
having uh, a, a big, a bigger fundament than we have it right now. Uh, I think you have a fantastic constitution, but you have to live up politically to that constitution. Uh, we should not interfere too much, but what the European Union started and had the intention just to take you by the hand rather loosely and to guide you into the future, I think is an appropriate way to do business. So I think as soon as we can say we leave it to the Kosovars to do the job and Kosovo is now, Kosovo is ready now to join the European Union uh, and this is, this is the final goal that you become a member of the European Union, then we should take all our people out, except those who bring money, who come in for investment, but take all the military people. And I think this should not take more than five, six years. Maximum. Yes. Dr. Reinhardt, north of the Ebar, in your judgment, what's possible, what's optimal, and over what time frame? Um, I think we, the, this, the idea to swap the northern part of Kosovo with the Presovo Valley is uh, an idea which is not working. It would, uh, it would open up a Pandora box on the whole, in the whole Balkans and it would be detrimental. So I think basically we have to find a solution for the people in the north of the Ibar, which is similar to a solution which we have in Germany in an enclave. We have a German, in Germany an Austrian enclave in the mountains where a couple of thousand Austrians live in Germany as Austrians, but they, cannot, they have no direct access to their country because the mountains are there. So the only way is through Germany in Austria proper. So they are Austrians with all Austrian rights, but they also share all the goodies of Germany. No problem whatsoever. They feel like Austrians and not like Germans, and they, they run for the Austrian downhill team, national downhill team, even saw their train in Germany. So I think a, a situation like this has to be worked out. But again, the European Union has to take a much higher initiative than that, and I think the Troika had some good ideas. But these ideas have to be put into reality, had to be pushed forward. And I think it's, it's not possible that you leave it to the Kosovo, Kosovars and to the Serbs working up. You need an intermediator in this regard. And it may take a time, but I think this is the only way to work together. Because I go one step further than many other people go. The whole Trepture complex used to be the biggest mining concept, uh, 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 conglomeration in Europe. Uh, if this has been taken away from Kosovo and reduced to the northern part, it will be very difficult for Kosovo, I think, economically to survive. This is an entity which has to be brought together again as an entity politically. And I think if the, if the, if the people in the north earn the same amount of money and don't have an even higher unemployment rate, if people are working as they did before when they were working in, in the mines, the Serbs and the Albanians together when they were still making money together. And these high-rising buildings in northern Mitrovica, they were living in the same houses without killing each other beforehand. So I think that should be one of the things which we have to look forward um, and, and try to improve. I think every boundary change would be detrimental for the future. Uh, we have Vesnik with a question. Uh, General Reinhardt, I have to admit that this was maybe the most impressive description of the developments in the first year after the war in Kosovo. And I think that Kosovars cannot appreciate enough your pragmatic approach in dealing with issues. Uh, a new presentation also confirms that we believe that this was the year of the most intensive developments in Kosovo. But this was also the time where we experienced a major influx of foreign secret services in Kosovo. My question to you is, did you ever, or were you ever confronted with these secret services and how did you deal with those issues? This is a very good question, but a question which also, if I answer now, shows you one of the biggest deficiencies in NATO. We have 
no NATO intelligence people. I had none under my command. I was privy to get some information by the Americans and by the British. But the Secret Service, the CIA, whatever it is, and even the Special Forces, the American Special Forces, the French Special Forces, operating in the country, were not under my command and control. But I was responsible for the consequences if they did wrong. And I was fighting very heavily with the American government and the French government to get these Special Forces under my command and control. But it's a question of sovereignty, and I never got them. So you have to realize, and the same is today in, in Afghanistan, where the Americans have some 3,000, an army of some 3,000 CIA agents doing their, their own activities beside what the military does. We have to see that, unfortunately, the world is not black and white. There's a lot of gray in between, and the question is, how can you deal with this gray color? And uh, I never, I never had any influence on what was going on there by that time. I, will be, I was more interested in the Serbian Secret Services, the Russian, and this other side. I tell you, the Russian secret, uh, the Secret Service and the Serbian Secret Service by that time, where we had very close supervision of what was going on north of the Ibar River, um, much more than we have right now. You, you know, there was rather heavy forces in that area. Uh, I think we had a very good grip on what's going on. We were constantly told by some people in Brussels and in Mons about those paramilitary people, you know, attacking other people. It never happened once that we met anybody with that. So I think there was a lot of bad pictures being painted to make it much more dangerous than it really was. And I had very close connections, I must tell you, very close connections to the Serb leaders uh, north of the Ibar River and also uh, very confidential and, 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 and friendly relationships. And whenever something like this happened, we checked together. It's the same thing that I was constantly told Serb forces are in the, in the zone of separation. We went in immediately. Not one case really happened in reality. This was all somebody saying, there's something. Buff, it went up like that. And we are ready to take one final question. May I and, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Raymond from TV Clan Kosovo. My question is: uh, At your speech, you told us that it was hard for you to make a country because when you came, there was no rule and law. You you made the example of the cars, and now we have the country, but we have LX here uh, because of, we don't have that rule of law, no, co no good courts, no good judges. And what, what should our institutions do, Albanians do, and how do you see the rule of law in the country now? I think this is one of the biggest problems still unsolved in Kosovo. Uh, we were exposed to two different sets of law when we came in here. This one, one was the Albanian Kanun, a law which also had capital defend, uh, uh, punishment, and the other thing was a much more liberal Serb law. Uh, but the Albanians told us by that time, we will not have the Serb law anymore in the future because we were basically uh, suffering under this law. So we took your Kosovo law uh, to The Hague and had it, had it modernized, modernized. And this is the law under which people are working today, but the, the problem is there are not enough prosecutors, not enough lawyers, not enough, enough judges here in the country, and the idea of getting foreigners into the country to do that is very difficult because the foreigners are not willing to come. I remember that we tried it by that time very, very heavily uh, going to the nations and asking them to send us lawyers. They were just not willing to come because they said it's no use. And you have, if you have American or British lawyers who are basically prone in their system, in their judicial system, and if they have to uh, become lawyers here in a non-anglistic uh, uh, system, uh, it's very difficult for them also because the systems are so totally different. Uh, I think, nevertheless, uh, if ULEX should work accordingly, 
We should get more lawyers and more prosecutors and more judges into that country to basically prevent the country to fall into a legal vacuum because this would, would be the worst thing which could happen to Kosovo. And all the crooks from all over the country and, and all the neighbors would come into that country doing their nasty business, knowing that they would not be punished if they would be caught. And this is not a very good incentive. So, Ryan, thank you very much.